Hello drivers, do you watch speedruns? For those who don't know, speedrunning is the instance of completing a game as fast as possible. Of course, playing well is necessary, but in this case you will also need to find new strats to beat the levels, sometimes by finding a way to skip a good part of it and gain a lot of time in the process. My personal experience with speedrun is limited to the time trials of the Crash Bandicoot series and the ones from Rayman Legends, but I like to watch speedrunner streams from time to time, including the ones from the Game Done Quicks website. In the Driver series, it seems the most popular game to speedrun is Driver 2, with the world record currently owned by Viper Racing with a time of 2 hours and 23 minutes. But today we are going to talk about Driver 3 and the skips and strats you can do to be quicker and I'm sure you are going to learn a few things today. Who's better to talk about that than one of the best speedrunners of Driver 3? And in today's video I'm very happy to have It's Cal with me. He is mostly active on Twitch doing speedruns of all the games of the Driver series. Thank you Vortex. Hi, I'm Cal. I've run Driver 3 for a little over a year now. I'm currently second place with a time of 1 hour 37 minutes. Uh, Driver 3 is a very fun game to run, albeit quite challenging, unpredictable and unforgiving. Um, but there are some fun little skips and strats used throughout the run that really add up the time save. Driver 3 relies heavily on scripted events and checkpoints during missions, meaning that even if you can skip past a large portion of a mission, you will still have to activate checkpoints along the way in order to proceed. Some missions show a greater use in checkpoints than others, though as buggy as the game can be, there is currently no known way to skip these, meaning skips and strats in the any% percent run are determined by whether you have activated the next part of each mission first. So let's take a look at some of the strats we use. Firing range is all yours, sir. Police HQ, the first mission, Tanner's first day on the job. Got to get to work nice and early, got to get that target practice in. Except we just run past it. We'll just tell them that we did it and they'll never know. Lead on Bacchus and the Siege see us travel from the police department across town to respond to a hostage call. This is a well orchestrated police raid and we have to make sure that nothing goes wrong. As speedrunners we disagree with this and we just drive the car straight through the front door. This activates the chase with Bacchus immediately, after which there's a few variations of the route that he can take, but the maximum time loss you'll see is about 20 seconds due to a longer route. There are two ways to complete Gator's Yacht. You can either head to the yacht first, take a dinghy and head over to Stiltsville to collect the explosives, meaning that enemies there won't target you. Is he alone? Or the alternative faster route is to head straight to Stiltsville and fight the enemies. However, this method can be extremely risky even for long time runners, as your boat can get destroyed, meaning you have to swim to a nearby boat and take that instead. Or you can die yourself, which is a huge chunk of time loss, as restarting at this point puts you way back at Tanner's house. Once you have the explosives though, it's a simple job of running through the yacht, avoiding conflict where possible, as stopping for gunplay is slow, and trying not to get killed, and then escaping to your speedboat which hopefully has enough health left to get far enough away from the yacht to complete the mission. Trapped is a very straightforward mission, simply escape the shopping mall and follow the quickest route to the hideout via the highway. During this escape sequence there are a few instances where RNG can cause you some issues due to where police can spawn, there are a few spots where foot officers can see you as well as a few spawn points along the highway and the road outside of the hideout where they can spawn in cars. If they do spot you, the time loss can become insurmountable as the police will continually spawn as you kill them. Assuming you've had a smooth drive to the hideout though, you will then be instructed to dump the car into the ocean across town. Ditch the car in the water, it's no good to us. They know everything about it. Get out of here. However, there is no specific requirement to drive across town to the checkpoint, and we are able to just drive around the corner to the same area where we complete Impress Lomaz earlier in the game and dump the car into the water there. At this point, it doesn't matter if the police are on us.
The first major skip comes during Dodge Island, in which we abuse both a large distance between checkpoints and some terrain that we are able to navigate with a minor setup. To perform this skip, after collecting the car from the gator, simply jump out of the warehouse, hit the brakes and position your car to mount the small ledge at the water's edge. Leave your car and strafe jump from the hood of the car over the fence and run around the complex to the water. Once you're in the water, you will activate the next checkpoint that will spawn the end point for the mission. Simply swim across to the island, back to Kalita's hideout, and you're done! A well-performed skip can save around a minute compared to the intended route with swimming, and even more time compared to escaping Dodge Island by car. The next major skip in Miami is performed during Retribution. In this mission, Tanner and Lomez pursue the gator from Dodge Island to his awaiting speedboat. Unfortunately, we cannot take down the Gator during the first chase sequence, due to both his health limit and Lomaz's offensive inability to aim a gun from a moving car, so your best bet here is to take out the henchman's car early on, as it consistently gets stuck in an alleyway later in the chase and can cause a mission failure. Once you arrive at the Gator's boathouse, you want to strafe through the enemies as fast as possible. If you get caught up, not only do you risk losing health and dying yourself, but Lomez can fast become overwhelmed and die to the enemies. If you're fast enough exiting the boathouse, you can strafe directly onto the Gator speedboat skipping a lengthy boat chase, saving potentially minutes of time due to skipping, as we saw during the car chase, dreadful in vehicle shooting. But once the gate is taken down, that's it, we're off to Nice. 18 Wheeler is designed with a few techniques in mind. After completing the drive to the compound, players can either swim in through a drain and come up right inside the compound, or use an entryway around the back. Personally, I think the best way to get in is to, like with Siege, drive straight through the front door, massacring everyone in your way. Once you're in and all of the enemies are taken care of, it's a simple straightforward job of picking up the container and placing it onto the trailer. Once you've done this, you have to get down off the crane. The best way to do this is to jump, obviously. Tanner takes no damage if you do a combat roll. That's just how John Tanner is. After this, you just have to take the truck to the end. There are two different ways you can go. The intended route, which is a little bit easier, or the route that I do and the world record holder do in our runs, which is a bit more risky, but it's about 30 seconds faster. During hijack, the intended method to complete the mission is to take out the driver of the truck and drive to the compound to collect the car for Kalita. As they don't know the driver, this means Tanner can get in safely without the risk of combat. Vous êtes arrivé. La voiture est à vous. C'est un vrai bijou, juste comme Fabien a commandé. This however is optional, and you can skip the truck driving direct to the compound to go in loud. For this we take a specific route that cuts out a lot of coastal driving. At the beginning of the mission we immediately back up and turn around to head along the outer northernmost road before snaking down some thin lanes to get to the compound. This is considerably faster than the intended route and method, but risks the target car becoming damaged in the ensuing gunfight. The biggest issue being if a tyre gets burst, escaping the pursuing cars can be a little tricky.
During Kalita in trouble, we have to save Kalita who has been ambushed by Fabienne and her goons. On the way there, there is a truck of gunmen that we have the option of taking out, which we skip. This objective isn't compulsory and doing so risks Kalita dying, us taking unnecessary damage or our car becoming destroyed. So we drive direct to Fabienne's compound and kill her guys. Kill her. I don't care how you do it. Just kill her. After this, we're supposed to jump into the car and chase Fabienne until she pulls over, at which point we can kill her. However, due to Tanner's significantly faster strafing speed, we are able to run to the street and head off Fabienne's car, killing her, saving a few minutes of time over completing the mission as intended. The final skip during Nice takes place during Hunted, in which Tanner and Dubois are ambushed by Lomaz, Jericho and Kalita, who kill Dubois before Tanner makes his escape. The intended method to escape the boathouse is to use the forklift to lift up a crate up to a hole in the catwalk, creating a bridge of sorts. This is notoriously difficult to get a hang of for a lot of players, as the crate does not remain connected to the forklift and can fall off very easily if you move too sharply. If this happens, not only are you losing time in the speedrun, but dropping the crates more than once or twice almost guarantees you'll begin getting shot by the enemies. Our preferred method is to strafe jump across the gap, bypassing the forklift entirely. This in itself isn't the easiest strat in the game, as the window for landing the jump is quite small, but once you get the hang of it you should be able to perform it consistently. During another lead, Tanner and Jones chase down an arms dealer in their hunt to find Kalita's crew. This is another unforgiving chase mission in which the target can take a few different routes, except in this mission you get to drive what I consider to be the worst car in the game. With all its weight at the rear, understeer is a huge issue here, as the chase car can make some sudden and tight movements, so be careful not to fall too far behind. Once you reach the end, the arms dealer will make off on foot into Grand Bazaar, where a large amount of enemies await. Normally, a long gunfight would ensue, but again, with the aid of Tanner's strafe abilities, you are able to run straight through the gunfight, collecting health as you go if you need it, before cornering the arms dealer in a shop. The final major skip of the game is performed during Alleyway, in which we play as Jones chasing the Bagman, while Tanner splits off to chase Kalita. There are a number of routes the Bagman may take during this first car chase and unfortunately there is no way to manipulate this. All we can do is hope he doesn't take an overly long route, as this can range from losing 10-20 to 20 seconds to around a minute. Stick with him until he reaches his final destination and try not to crash into any oncoming traffic or scenery as the fail conditions for falling behind chase targets are extremely unforgiving. Once the bagman reaches the alleyway, do not drive in. To perform this skip you must park Jones's car outside of the alleyway and immediately kill the driver of the truck on the left of the entrance. Do not walk too far in, as this will activate the script to make the truck drivers block you in and you cannot enter either truck later on to move them, therefore preventing the skip. With the truck driver taken care of, walk into the building indicated by the arrow. A short way inside the door, the camera will reset and a new musical score will begin. This indicates that you have activated the next mission checkpoint and can now perform the skip. Leave the building through the door you used to enter and walk back out of the alleyway to where the bagman drove in from. Your car will not be enterable as it is scripted to become destroyed after the checkpoint if being shot beforehand doesn't. Run round the side of the block and you will see a large double door. Walk Jones into the crack between the two doors and this will activate the final checkpoint, spawning the mission end. A short distance down the street from there, there are two henchmen and their car kill them, steal their car, drive to Jones's hotel, ending the mission. 
You will get chased by more henchmen in cars during this section, though if any are still tailing you upon reaching the end, simply exit your car and take them out. You can use the street entrance to the hotel for a little extra time save, rather than the parking lot entrance dictated by the red arrow. The very final mission, Chase the Train, sees Tanner chasing down Jericho who is attempting to escape the police via train. There are a couple of ways to get ahead of the train here, the easiest being by cutting onto the street, following along and jumping back through a gap in the wall. This avoids any potential to crash into the train or get shot by Jericho who sits at the back of the train with an assault rifle. The faster, riskier approach is to stay on the tracks and head down the side of the train. If you're careful and fast enough, you can get ahead of the train before it crosses the first bridge, and from there it's a straight line drive to the end point. The final run of the game involves chasing Jericho on foot, fighting through his army of clones who pop in as you run up the road. Because of the number of enemies, it's very easy to become overwhelmed here, so the best advice for this part is to be careful, take your time, and if you have to, pick up any health you see along the way. Once you battle through the army of beige suited clones, your final fight is against Jericho. Our strat for this completely ruins the final fight. There are two areas Jericho may run to, both of which have a large dumpster with a dead zone that allows you to target Jericho, but preventing him from targeting you. Once you're in this zone, you can stand and shoot Jericho until taking him down with no risk of being shot. There we have it, all of the major skips and strats that we use in the Driver 3 Any% percent run. Hopefully we'll see some more in the future, and I hope that if anyone's been considering trying this game out, that this video serves as a helpful tool for you learning. Otherwise, Vortex, thank you for having me, and drive safe. Thank you a lot, Carl. Let's go back to the French accent. Maybe one day I will try to speedrun it myself because it's a good challenge to test when you know the game as much as I do and it opens new various ways in the gameplay while adding a new challenge to the story mode. I hope you liked the video. I would like to thank my Patreon, Tapas Corrals, Newer Scenes and Driver Dimension and of course you can support me as well with the links in the description and see you soon drivers.